When these amazing ruins were first rescued from the jungle, the world marveled at the lost capital of an ancient empire. From here, between the 9th and the 13th centuries, the Khmer emperors ruled virtually all of Southeast Asia. This is what the tourists see, the great Angkor Wat temple. What's not so well known is that Angkor City sprawled over a thousand square kilometers, or 600 square miles. In its day, it was the largest city on Earth. It's actually like a great low-density industrial city, sort of Los Angeles. What's, what sort Sprawling. of population are we talking about? Uh, the general estimates are somewhere on the order of a million within this thousand square K. Meet Professor Roland Fletcher, an Australian archaeologist who has spent years studying large cities of the ancient world. And how, how does that compare to, say, Paris or London at the same time? Paris or London at that period were uh, a couple of hundred thousand or less. So they're very small places, very wow. small indeed. So how far does it actually go? Beyond the tree line there? I oh, know, it extends to the hills on the northern horizon. Literally the horizon. All the way around? All the way around. It's absolutely amazing. Over there, that's. I'm just where getting the used to this ancient sprawl when Professor Fletcher produces a radar map taken from this the space a, a shuttle. Radar, image radar from penetrates the jungle, revealing a vast network of ruined roads, suburbs, and canals. The colours turning hidden ruins into a skeletal record. Of civilization. That's the West Barai, which is eight kilometers. That's the big north. reservoir out here. It's the one over there. Right. And the bit I'm really interested in is this huge road that runs up for 25 kilometers up to the Kalen Hills, which is up to that uh, high point on the hills. Okay. And the point of all this? Right. Well, something went wrong. Even though it was the capital of a mighty empire situated in a green and fertile land, it died. Professor Fletcher thinks he knows why. Well, the reason I'm interested in it is because it's the largest pre-industrial, low-density city. And there are a lot of problems about why those low-density cities die. Because this is the biggest example, this is the key test. And at the moment, our suspicion is that it's an ecological problem. It's to do with excessive land clearance under all these trees, and in fact, off beyond the horizon. There are Anchorean period fields under the forests. So this whole area would have actually been just paddy field plains? Right, with, with trees where the houses are along the streets, like you see in modern villages. Part of this history here may be being rerun, and that's what we want to assess. They felled the trees, overfished the lake, and eventually ran out of food, population, and purpose. Professor Fletcher believes this architectural time capsule sends out a warning to the world. It was the Los Angeles, the Mexico City, or the London of its day, and it died. Yet ecologically, the same mistakes he believes brought about its demise are being repeated again, right now. The question is, if it happened once, could it happen again? But far more recently, Cambodia experienced an even greater cataclysm. We're about to enter the last bastion of the Khmer Rouge and the final resting place of one of the world's bloodiest killers. <laughs> 